eBay Motors is here for the ride. Elbow grease and a whole lot of love transformed 100,000 miles and a body full of rust into a drive entirely its own. LED headlights, spoilers, whatever you need. eBay Motors has it at affordable prices. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, it's guaranteed to fit your ride every time. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. Have you found the keys to unlock your best trip? On a Trafalgar tour, you unlock more than just the world. We give you the keys to discover real connections and one-of-a-kind experiences. It all starts with expert itineraries where everything is taken care of. With Trafalgar, your money goes further, and so do you. Unlock your best self. Discover more at trafalgar.com slash unlock. That's T-R-A-F-A-L-G-A-R dot com slash unlock. Good morning, good afternoon, and good night. And welcome to T-Pain's Nappy Boy Radio Podcast. The most fun you'll ever listen to while you're folding your clothes. Now let's get this straight. This is not your average podcast. T-Pain's Nappy Boy Radio is super fun, super crazy. It's pretty much an in-your-face conversation. That's the good thing about us. We don't do interviews. We do conversations. All of my guests, all of my co-hosts, we chill. We drink, we play games, we have the song of the week, we have the creative curse word of the week, as long as you're having fun as our guest. Speaking of guests, each week I'm going to go through my whole contact list and dive head first into the world of music, gaming, exotic cars, tech, strippers probably, doctors probably, probably strippers that are only stripping so they can pay for tuition to become a doctor. You never know. My wife is a certified bartender. She'll make you a drink while you're here. We'll get you drunk and make you play VR after. It's a lot going on, but that's what it's all about over here at T-Pain's Nappy Boy Radio Podcast. See you soon, baby! Hey guys, today on CarCast, uh, we're going to welcome back our friend Alistair Weaver from Edmunds.com. We're going to get into a few things that we liked this year, a little bit of EV talk, and uh, and uh, the final updates on uh, Goldberg's Garage before we head into the new year. Before we get started, here's Geico. Do you own? Do you rent your home? Sure you do. And it can be hard work. You know what's easy? Bundling your policies with Geico. Geico makes it easy to bundle your homeowners or renters insurance along with your auto policy. It's a good thing too, because you have so much to do already around your home. Why not make it easy? Go to Geico.com, get a quote and see just how much you could save. It's Geico easy. Visit Geico.com today. That's Geico.com. Welcome to CarCast. I'm Matt, the moderator, DeAndre, here with Bill Goldberg. Good morning, sir. Hello. Good morning. Just found out my best friend just got married. That's pretty fun. Uh, uh, there you go. Start the day off great. There you go. Uh, welcome back to the show, Alistair Weaver from Edmunds.com. How are you, Alistair? Yeah, I'm good, thanks. Season's greetings to you all. I, I know everything's kind of uh, jamming for the end of the year. This is going to be the uh, the last uh, original show for, for the year. We're going to... Oh. We'll probably edit together either some best ofs or rerun an interview or something that we thought was kind of fun from the past year or so. So, uh, or maybe do take I, something from do, ACS. Yeah. Do I make the best of list, Matt? You do. You make the best of list. That's why we invited you on at the last minute and said, "Hey, what are you doing tomorrow morning?" <laughs> As you're out with your company boozing it up at your Christmas party, <laughs> how are you feeling this morning? We did. We did karaoke in a Los Angeles dive bar. Yes. And, and this is a this is a very LA thing because when I've done karaoke in the past, it's been about four a.m. in Japan, you know, yeah. a- absolutely off my face. Now because it's LA, like suddenly you look around the team and you've got professional singers and everybody's taking it seriously. So there's some amazing performances. I did Oasis Look Back in Anger. If you know your Britpop from the nineteen <laughs> yeah, nineties, yes. So uh, my um, that's not my an easy music- song to sing. No, or to shout um, <laughs> yeah. after a JD and Coke too many, but no, it was great. It was great fun. It was really nice to have a tip together, but uh, yeah, it's um, it's not my forte. Uh, <laughs> okay, uh, Bill, you've been out for the past couple of weeks. You've been popping back and forth uh, here to LA to get some work done, film at NCIS Los Angeles, which I know you have friends on that show and. They all drive Dodges, so that's good. Although you said Daniela drives a, or, or her husband drives a Lucid. 
Yeah, I mean, he, I'll give him a break. He fought for our, he, he put his life on the line for our country, so he can drive anything he wants. It doesn't matter. <laughs> yeah, you're so. still on the fence with Lucid. Um, and then you pop back over to do uh, filming the Goldberg sitcom as well, and they got you all fancied up in your, uh, your, your knee-high socks and your short shorts. <laughs> I'm just going to say that the line that I have to utter in this episode will create the largest amount of gifts <laughs> G-I-F-S. Yes, no, I gotcha. Ever, ever created from me with me as a character. I can guarantee you that right now. I'm not gonna allude as to what I said, but I guarantee you if it was written by the writers from the Goldbergs and they had me say it as Coach Nick, this is gonna be really I damning know. probably <laughs> to my my you know well, to the rest work but you know it is good work. uh but it's a great it's a great comedic series it's a great sitcom i know you have fun doing that and very different from you know from ncis right so there's... dude i go from one end of the spectrum to the next Are you <laughs> I'm, I'm i'm chasing down mercenaries in one unload an ak you know unload an ar-15 and then in the other i'm wearing tube socks and i'm yeah <laughs> It, gets, it couldn't be a wider range of characters. But, what's, I mean, at the end of the day, I think that's a great deal. What's more difficult, the action or the comedy? They're both very natural. They're, the, the, comedy, the comedy is more difficult because uh, you, you're, I'm surrounded by stand-ups. The, everyone is a freaking comedian. Yeah. So I, I'm, I can deal with you know, high stress situations, acting like I'm killing somebody or hunting somebody down. That's, that's normal, <laughs> you know, but being surrounded by people that, you know, make a living being funnier than you are. Uh, it's a, it's tough. So, but it, you know, the fact is, is they got great writers and all I have to do is talk. So yeah, there you go. but it's more difficult for sure. Um, and a, a quick update on the, on the garage. You did a couple of posts don't quick update me, dude. This is the end of the fucking year. <laughs> I've been doing this for three years. Yeah. Don't even pull this two sentence bullshit on me. I've gone through hell in the last <laughs> few years. And the last 48 hours, I've pretty much culminated the move in of my garage slash gym. And I'm all for active participation, but I am never moving anything ever again. <laughs> uh, Taking 400 pound average pieces of machinery, you know, 200 yards on a skip loader and then having to take it to the second floor and install it. I'm out. I'm done for, for all the, the year. For all the gym it equipment. Was worth, yeah. Yeah. It was, yeah. it was worth I mean, you, know, I, and the, you posted the video of the guys putting the floors down, the, you know, the, the, the mat floor for the, for the gym. I only, I only post part of reality, dude. That's, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's that's part of it. Uh, but I know yeah. there's more to come. But so for you guys just catching up, right? You've heard a lot of updates on the on the garage, but the gym is a second level. It's like a mezzanine level, and to get the weights and stuff and all the, the equipment up there, it wasn't going to happen through going through the garage because uh the garage is built on a big cement slab, but the surrounding like asphalt or whatever is going to be there is not done so there's probably like a three or four inch lip you know that you uh, have to three or four inch add nine inches to that it's third it's 14 inch lip wow okay so you can't drive up it without crazy ramps and whatever so all of the weight equipment needed to be kind of lifted and put up through the balcony of the gym and then through uh, the door it, it, assuming that all would i don't know cranes and all kinds of stuff to kind of get it to work <laughs> Oh yeah, I mean it was it was an arduous task, but but you know let's move back to the fourteen inches of of difference in level I have entering the garage and trying to put a twin turbo seventeen hundred horsepower charger in reverse, yeah, on, on makeshift ramps and not not drag you know the, both the turbos on the ground. Oh, and then I have to take Wanda's you know LS seven powered five speed you know 70 trans am in reverse up these ramps it, it was it well, just it, this last week has been unbelievable oh and it was raining and so you have to pull the front end of the car or the rear end of the car up onto the concrete then spray it all off before you enter the garage correct 
Yeah. You know, and you got to yeah. do the front end and everything is, a, it, it, I'm just saying it's, it's, it's almost finished and it's at a point now where <laughs> I can smile and I don't, I don't really want to kill everybody when I go over there anymore. So I'm having fun. I'm, I'm, I'm doing the little details that you enjoy doing after such a long project. And I got to tell you, I mean, you've seen a little bit on Instagram, but that's absolutely nothing compared to what we've been through. And I videoed all of it and it, it's going to be an unbelievable story to see, see. I mean, we had a deer in the garage again the other day, <laughs> you know, while we're all trying to simultaneously finish our task, yeah. there's a 400 pound deer walking. I mean, I, I just can't make this shit up. So <clears throat> it's been interesting. <clears throat> then I did a time lapse of the, of the guys doing the grade around the house. It, it was a it was a seven hour time lapse. Those guys must have done a circle around my my building, you know, in the in the time lapse. Yeah, sped five hundred times. <laughs> all you see it's it's like a top, you know, these gigantic machines going around and around. I mean, it, it, it's an unbelievable undertaking, man. But I'm just I'm so ecstatic. I have I don't look like that much of a trailer park now. I only have five cars strewn throughout the yard that haven't been, you know, put in the garage yet. Yeah. But man, I'm there. I got every piece of weight equipment in. I had my first workout last night. And so uh, Goldberg's garage is almost open for business, man. So all of the bitching and moaning that <laughs> you people have heard me do over the past three years about this project is not over because it's the, the project is never really over, but it's minuscule compared to the, the misery that I've been through. And I mean, let, let's be honest, you know, none of us, the reason why we're on this podcast is because of the automobile, right? Yeah. Transportation. Well, I haven't been myself because I haven't had my, my niche near me and accessible for the last three years, whether it be my vehicles or whether it be my gym. So you guys can empathize. You just building a garage. You, you can empathize being away from all your babies. I mean, we, we make a living in this automobile business and, and all of it because we're passionate about what we do. And it's just been a very difficult situation to be moved into a house, but not be moved into that garage. And so to have it com almost completed, man, I, what a breath of fresh air this is. Yeah, it's uh, it, it looks great. We're excited to see the videos and stuff when we're able to sort of sit down and focus on uh, the content side of the things. But yeah, some of the some of the quirkiness. I saw you pulling one of the cars in, and the guys were helping you out and getting the ramps on. And then we forgot we had the drag slicks on that car. So once it hit the water, it didn't go. It just spun on the ramps, yeah. and it couldn't go up the hill. And then you got to wipe it all down before you bring it into the garage. Um, but it and then. It, then it doesn't fit properly on the lift because you had Ben Pack reverse the entrance on the each platform. So now, you know, I've got like a quarter of an inch of clearance when you raise these vehicles. Well, uh, these cars got to go somewhere, right? So yeah. I mean, everything is an issue and it, it's a domino effect. But in the grand scheme of things, we're p way past all the all the misery. So yeah. it's just hopefully nothing but wonderful cool drives and content and you know hey i found my uh all of the sound uh equipment that you guys told me to buy three years ago for the podcast <laughs> yeah and it's all still brand new in boxes i'm wondering is it all i'm sure it's quite obsolete by now uh i i don't know i think you'll be okay you can run it past chris and see what he thinks you know but that's you know indicative of yeah life the last three years have been in a box yeah. Right? Now I can finally open stuff up and realize that, oh, here, here's the soundboard for the podcast <laughs> room. Oh, wow. <laughs> Technology's gone to a point now where, I mean, I'm sure it'd be laughed at by anybody running a podcast. Yeah. Anyway. Uh, all right. Go. So um, uh, moving on, a Alistair, thank you. I uh, want to um, kind of just uh, talk about this past year. Like what, what, what's been going on in the car world the past year? There's got to be some things that uh, – what do we like? What do we don't like? Is there stuff we're looking forward to next year? I mean there was a lot of talk of EV this year, and probably more EVs have been coming out this past year than than 
you know, than we've seen in the past and even still trickling in and we're just starting to test drive things like Genesis and Hyundai and, and, uh, uh, you know, EVs from those guys. But, uh, what are your thoughts on, the on the past year? I was just listening to Bill's rant and I did a kitchen remodel that was supposed to take two months and took nearly six. So I could give you lots of war stories about that if you like, but maybe we should, maybe we should talk about cars. So I've actually got somebody turning up in about 20 minutes to try and fix the stairs that have been seven weeks trying to fix some wood on the stairs. But anyway, let's move on. I yeah. feel your pain. I feel your pain. Yeah. And you got the babe, two babies there. Mine you guys related. Mine was related to cars. Yeah. That was I, I, all that it was related to. So yeah, uh, I, I spent five months. I, I, I spent. F- <laughs> I spent five months living in three hundred square feet with two tiny children. So uh, <laughs> anyway, we we crack on. Yeah, um, and there's uh, that the cars. Um, yeah, I mean it's been a it, it's a fascinating time right now. I mean, we come on the show every time we talk about EVs and 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 you know the transition, not just. New technology in in terms of propulsion, but new brands, Lucid, Rivian, Fisk are about to launch. They just started to build their first first cars. So it's just a hugely exciting time. Then you've got all the talk of autonomy, self-driving, et cetera, et cetera. So, you know, I've been involved in this game now for 25 years and... I think this is the most interesting period that I've I've lived through. Kind of, you know, like intellectually interesting, the biggest period of change and how everybody's dealing with that. And, you know, it sort of manifests, uh, manifests itself ultimately in, in the products as well. And, you know, we, are, we will see over the next two years, it's going to be all the talk will be EVs. I mean, we're going to see some gas cars come through. Obviously, there's a new Mustang that's coming on stream early next year. That's still gas powered. But even that's kind of indicative of where the market is, that Ford is telling you this is a new Mustang. The reality is it's a heavy facelift, a heavy mid-cycle refresh, if you like, of the existing car, because all their money and all their resource and all their thinking is really going into EV development. So the gas world has kind of stopped Engines aren't being developed. Nothing's getting more efficient. So they're just going to continue to to make iterations of what they have into the near future until everything just pivots to EVs. So it's, uh, I was talking to at the LA show to the one of GM's VPs of marketing, and he was saying, well, you know, we're just rationalizing the gas range and everything will be about EVs, but we can't afford to do, you know, we can't afford to have a like 30, 30 vehicle range. So, We'll have a handful of gas cars while we develop all the EVs, and slowly but surely we'll turn off the gas. So it's a it's an absolutely fascinating time. I'm I'm curious if we're going to have this conversation and again in five years or ten years and go we're starting to phase out the EVs because none of it really worked the way we thought it was going to work. So we're bringing back the gas engine or some alternative fuel. Uh, well, do you know what I had? I, I I got out. I got out of bed this morning, about to take my daughter to school, realized the Tesla wasn't charged properly, don't have a charger at home, so I had to go to the supercharger. And I was looking at a stat on the Tesla app. In the last month, I've spent $118 at Tesla superchargers, last 31 days. Yeah. And even Tesla's app says that's more expensive than gas. Yeah. It's like, yeah. I, I'm going to tweet it. It's a fascinating statistic. It's like, you spent 118 bucks on our superchargers. The gas price would be 117 <laughs> So my, my question is, all the focus, we knew coming into this year and we knew coming into this period that everyone was transitioning because of everything, right? So trying to, have, trying to make that the big sell, but looking at reality and the charging issues, how can these companies truly be fully invested while the the infrastructure doesn't support it. I think it's politics, Bill. I mean, if you look at, it's like what happened with diesel in Europe in days where everybody started focusing on CO2s and everybody said, you've got to buy diesel. Then a few years later, we said, actually, don't buy diesel. So all the experts at the time said, unless you've got sophisticated cleanup apparatus, this isn't a good call because of all the, the knock stuff. But every, politics was focused on CO2, so the world in Europe went diesel, and now mm-hmm. you can't buy it. You know, you can buy, nobody's buying diesel anymore. I think the challenge is politics is driving this, not just in the US, but globally. Mm-hmm. So, you know, all the manufacturers can do is, is build cars to meet the prevailing legislation. 
you know, if you're not allowed legally to sell a vehicle, you can't sell it. So whatever privately they're, they're thinking about the transition and how fast everything's moving, the reality is if you're not going to be legally allowed to sell a, a, you know, a gas car in Europe after 2030 or 2035, then what do you do? You know, you've got to have a business. But if technology doesn't support it and you're coming up to 2035, laws have to be changed. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And, and also the political landscape, you know, in the U.S., if, you know, if we have a change of president in the next election, what happens then? But the U.S. <laughs> the U.S. is a big market, but you're not going to end up building cars for America. Yeah, to a certain extent, you will, but you're not just going to have like every gas car in the States or the Middle East and every electric mm-hmm. car in Europe. It's just, you know, it just doesn't really work like that. It's but a global you industry. You can't tell me these. You can't tell me that every major manufacturer doesn't have a group of people still looking into uh, expanding what's going on right now as opposed to the future. I mean, they have to just uh, for their bottom line to be prepared. You know, it's just like going into the EV world. You know, the sooner you get in there, the more experience you have and the better product you have. But, but I, weird, I think there are, deal. there are opportunities. I mean, we were looking at the Mustang. The Camaro's likely to die as a gas car. The Challenger Charger is dying. So Ford might have 10 years, whether they're only, only gas-powered muscle car in town. They might be looking at that thinking, this is okay. We've spent very little money developing this latest one. We stuck a fancy screen in, made it look a bit like a Chevrolet. And, uh, and away we go. We're going like, to you know, lap this up for the next decade. And, listen, and, and they have the Mustang Mach-E. So under the brand name, which is important for them, they, they still have EV feeding that. Uh, I, I think one of the... I think one of the most difficult things that the car companies are going to have to really get on board with, and, and they're getting closer to that, is the, the whole development cycle of a vehicle is going to have to be much shorter. Because as you guys are saying, the rules are going to change quicker than they have been oh. before. To sit around and go, we know what cars are coming out over the next 10 years and what they're going to be powered by and how efficient they're going to be, I think that's off the table. I think they don't have 10 years of of – of room to to make those decisions because like you said uh, uh, elections change things infrastructure is going to change things like at one point when we said hey the the average miles per gallon fleet for your company needs to be 35 miles per gallon by a certain year that puts everything on the car companies to make an efficient engine but now to say a lot of it has to be ev no combustion at all that's not all on the car companies. They can develop the cars, but then what do we do with plugging the cars in and getting them charged and that infrastructure? The car companies are going to go, this is not our problem. That's why all they do is keep trying to convince us to get a charger at home and charge it at home, right? Like you talking about going to the Tesla uh, superchargers. I was out at an event th- this weekend and it was a it was a late night event, and uh, uh, I was out with with Adam Carolla. I, we were getting back at two thirty three in the morning. I dropped him off at his at his house in my Lightning. I didn't have enough charge to get home. I have to stop at like a Vaughn's parking lot that's completely closed to get to the supercharger just to just to top off. I was going to come about five miles short. So I just needed to find a charger and it's fucking pouring rain and I'm wearing a suit and it was just like drenched. It was like, it was so, so cold and miserable. And I just needed to just sit in the goddamn thing for 10 minutes to get like 30 miles of range. It was like, it was a shit show at three o'clock in the morning. It was like, this is a, this is a fucking terrible situation. And the reason why is is I I had it plugged in earlier in the day at my apartment complex. Normally I charge it at my at my warehouse, uh, but I, we used up the charge. I plugged it at my apartment complex, and the the chargers that they have there one they're very expensive. They're for the tenants, but you still pay, and they're incredibly <laughs> slow. I, I mean, you're just you're getting seven miles per hour. Of charge, seven miles of range per hour of charge, right? Quite efficient. So I, I got in the truck and I was wearing a, a suit and I was like, I'm going to go pick up Adam. We're going to go to this event. And I was like, oh, I've got 60 miles of range and I know I've got to drive 
67 miles <laughs> and I was like and I knew I was going to get screwed on the way back and if I went to try to charge it on the way there I wouldn't have made it on time so uh it, it yes that infrastructure still is a shit show it just it oh, just doesn't understate I, I was talking to Bentley's CEO yeah uh, in the US and I was like they're gonna obviously switch over to to EV like everybody else I was like how do you deal with that? Because your Bentley driver does not want to end up. This does not sound snobbish. I think this is just reality. They're not going to want to pull into Walmart at two o'clock in the morning because they're running out of charge, or even six o'clock at night and sit there for half an hour. I mean, it sounds all, but that's just not a Bentley experience. It's, it's it shouldn't be any EV experience. <laughs> it, 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 yeah, no one should have to go through that for transportation. All right, and, so, and now and now Tesla's doing trucks, like proper trucks, truck, like semis. Truck, yes, truck, yes. truck, truck, trucks. And and there's a lot of talk about that as well. Like there are semi not not pickup and, trucks though, no pickup yeah. trucks, no, just the, trucks. The the semi trucks, the no pickup trucks. Yeah, they've been promising that for for years. But listen, the semi truck only came out three years after they said it was going to. So they're they're pretty much ahead of the game, I think, in Tesla terms. Uh, <laughs> I'll, I'll pick it on them, but um, I. I'm going to say range is going to be a big thing, and that's going to be one of the things that the car companies can address. Uh, it kind of falls on their shoulders versus infrastructure. I, you know, my, my truck is supposed to have 300 miles of range. Um, I've never gotten 300 miles of range. Uh, like I said, I'm sure part of it is driving style, um, and my – my commute like here to the studio or Adam's house or whatever uh, is up on the 405. For you guys that are in L.A., I, I go up the 405 past the Getty Museum and then back down. So going up that hill seems to take up a lot more battery than coasting down the hill would save me, right? So, oh, he's going over the hill to the – you know, or through the canyons to get to the Hollywood Hills. Um, but look, I, I, I charge it to 100%. The other day, and 251 miles of range. I'm expecting my driving style to dig into my range a little bit, but on a 300 mile range vehicle, I wasn't really expecting a 50 mile hit. <laughs> uh, and it's been that way since day one. When I bought the truck, took it off the showroom floor, it said 299, and and then it dropped to two seventy four on it on the next charge, and now it's averaging about two fifty. That's why I told you that all five of the lightnings that were purchased at Bernie dot, at Bernie Ford were That's all. Yeah, they were returned. Right, it's not doing what it's supposed to be doing. I mean, I don't know, like Allison, what 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 are you seeing as your margin of error? Like, I I know you guys test the range and you have your loop, and it's really about. The efficiency, and it's supposed to be real world, but I, I don't know. Like, listen, a friend of mine just – he's, like, driving around Florida, and he's in a Mustang Mach-E, and he's like, oh, I got 11 miles more than what it said it was going to do. I was like, I don't know what you're doing. How are you driving that thing? Yeah, I mean, I was just I was just looking up the um, our Edmunds EV Rage test figures uh, on the uh, – where it what, Where's it gone? Uh, yeah, F one fifty Lightning Platinum, which is yeah. actually the well, actually less efficient than the Lariat because Platinum's got bigger wheels and stuff. Yeah, that's they're what saying I've got. three. They're saying three hundred. We we got three forty one, and that but that's on a mixed loop. I think this is the, this is the thing, Matt. Like, if you're going up and down grades all the time, if you're knocking around town and you start, you know, it, it just our loop is designed to reflect kind of real world driving and sensibly driving. So we're not sort of hammering the acceleration, but we're just driving it to the speed limit, not in a kind of like, not in a kind of eco driving way, a sort of realistic assessment, but it's designed to reflect high, you know, highway, uh, just mixed usage. So we tend to normally overperform the EPA, but not for things like Tesla's. Um, but again, it's like, how are you using the vehicle? Are you, are you hauling stuff? Are you on and off the gas all the time? Are you using the acceleration? I mean, there's no different to a gas car in that respect that, you know, how often do you hit the EPA figures in a gas car if you use the performance? But obviously the impact is bigger. I mean, it's hard because if you made the batteries bigger, the, the, the F-150 Lightning's got about a 130 kilowatt hour battery, 
which is already very big and very expensive. And that's why it ends up costing a load of money for the extended range. So, and then it takes a load of time to charge because it's a massive battery. So if you want to go further, you've got more battery, more weight, more charge time, more cost. So it's, it's this like constant balancing act. I mean, battery technology will improve, but we're not seeing the seismic changes that we were, you know, two or three years ago. I, I don't think it's going to be all on, on, on the battery technology. I think there's going to be a huge emphasis on weight reduction. That's going to be the biggest thing we're going to have to go after. I mean, I know like F-150 is like, oh, we're doing an aluminum body and it's, you know, it's 500 pounds lighter or whatever than it used to be. But, uh, the, we're going to ha- car companies are going to have to start looking at weight reduction more than they have in the past and and they look at the largest you know organ of the body right like the skin and they go oh well let's make this skin aluminum or let's get to carbon fiber or something but they're really going to have to focus on uh on optimizing you know suspension pieces uh you know, all the cast aluminum pieces are going to have to be pocketed or something like that for for lighter weight. Uh, like you said, my my platinum it's got a huge twenty two inch wheel on it. There's no reason why those wheels couldn't be ten pounds lighter per corner. I mean, we when I went down to HRE and I'm like, "What do you got?" And they're like, "We can do the exact same ten inch wheel. Actually, it's a little bit wider, or a uh, uh, twenty two inch wheel, but a little bit wider." And they were they were about ten pounds per corner. So about 40 pounds lighter overall in that vehicle. Now, in a vehicle that weighs, I don't know, 60-something hundred, 6,700 pounds, maybe 40 pounds doesn't make a difference. But maybe it does. I mean, honestly, the big weight's in the battery. So if you can improve the battery technology, you've got to, like, install, have the batteries. You've got to cool the batteries. You've got to, do, you've got to protect the batteries. That's the, the other thing that we've been talking about in the office is I think the Rivian's the heaviest that we've tested. I want to say that's, like, 7,400 pounds. Yeah. You get hit by like schoolboy physics, mass, you know, momentum is mass times velocity. You get whacked by something that, that weighs 7,400 pounds. You know, it's like a, it's like Bill Spear, isn't it? Like, you know, <laughs> if, if, if Spears, you and I, Matt, we're, 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 to, we're toast forever. But if he hits another guy who's also, I can't remember what you weigh, Bill, but a lot, you know, if you hit another guy of the same weight, <laughs> it's, it, it's okay, right? Um, it's it's not nine. it's less it's less <laughs> less <laughs> it's less but yeah not okay but it's it, it's yeah. you have more cushion to to yeah, yeah it's the same thing great analogy right it it, it it's uh, yeah I mean it's like we're the Honda Fit by uh, by comparison if you get whacked by a Rivian it's uh, and not just a pick on Rivian you know lightnings and everything else everything is just getting so heavy yeah and so fast. That, well, you know, Humvee, you the Hummer, right? Things. The new EV Hummer. Oh, that's man. Be, I mean, that's, that's things. I don't know, it's like 10,000 pounds or something. 10,000 <laughs> no, no. pounds. Yeah. 1,000 feet wide. Yeah. You, no, you're Could right. Go. Like, you, you, you take a, one of those things and you crash into a Honda Fit, and the Honda Fit's just going to turn to dust. It's just going to explode into a powder and evaporate. <laughs> you know, it's just, it's right. But also, it's like, Wear on the roads, tires, brakes, you know, the efficiency of the vehicle, like the weight's going to be a huge, huge thing, which I, I guess we should all be talking to Gordon Murray yeah. <laughs> and go, hey, what what do we do about this? And and maybe he's got thoughts on weight reduction. He seems to be well, into that. <laughs> well, Lotus is going to do an electric SUV um, in the next year, which is kind of interesting, but you know, they were all about lightweight and everything else. That was their brand, you know, and even they, are, you know, it's going to be super heavy just because that's the nature of the technology at the moment. So yeah, it's, it's a, it's a, it's a big issue. And if you can get the, you know, it, it's all a vicious circle, more weight, less efficiency, bigger batteries, more charging time, more, more pressure on the infrastructure. And also you've got to generate all this electricity as well. That's the other thing that you know, people tend to quietly yeah. forget about. Yeah, in California, we're not going to be able to do it. So, it's, it's, I mean, it's if you look at the stats today, <laughs> it's you've got a market where supply is still a massive problem in in EV land. California, it's seventeen percent of the market. The rest of the country, according to our data, the rest of the country is about five percent. So, you know, it's still a it's a big market. I mean, like nearly one in five in California is now an EV. And what would it be? 
if you didn't have the supply problems and if you had cheaper EVs in the market. The average transaction price for an EV last time I looked was about 64 grand. <laughs> and I think it's 46 for a gas car at the moment, which is a ton of money. Oh, that's a huge difference, though. It's a 20 grand difference. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's a significant percentage difference. Yeah. But listen, by, by the way, if you're in this highly populated area like, like California, uh, you know, we've seen incentives for solar panels on your house if you have a house. And, and not many people can afford a house in California, but if you can, uh, you, I anticipate that's going to change. This EV thing is going to catch up and then the the cost of solar on your house and stuff or or office buildings or garages and and commercial places, it's all going to have to drastically come down to make it more efficient for developers because it's going to become mandated. Anything new that gets built is going to have to have solar power you know, or something because – it's going to have to be off the grid. And, of course, the electric companies are going to get pissed because they're going to say they're not going to make as much money for their shitty 100-year-old antiquated <laughs> hardware <laughs> that they can't maintain starts forest fires. Um, uh, okay, so that being said, what do we like? What came out this year <laughs> that we like? <laughs> right? There's been some interesting things, some interesting announcements, uh, but – I, it's, listen, looking into the future, you know, maybe this 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 Dodge SRT Banshee could be kind of interesting. We'll see how it actually turns out. But they made a big splash with their concept car and the crazy noise that it makes. And, it, you know, we saw it at SEMA and it's it's interesting. Um, uh, it, you know, who knows what the reality is going to be, but that's interesting. But that obviously was just a big announcement that didn't come out this year. Yeah, what, what were the headlines? I mean, to me, uh, I mean, looking back, um, I, I think it's pretty cool that Ferrari came out with that SUV. I mean, what were the what were y'all's highlights I, of the year? That, that, and that's a beautiful looking car. You know, most people yeah. when they do the first, you remember the first Cayenne that you could only drive at night. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it, it, it was yeah. I mean, the Ferrari. I haven't seen it in in sort of real life yet, but that's a pretty on in the pictures. It looks really strong. They did a really nice job and. I'm not like one of these guys that says, oh, you can't have, you know, it's ridiculous, blah, blah, blah. I mean, the reality is SUVs are so good to drive now. Like the Urus is an amazing piece of engineering. I, that is uh, fun to drive. Listen, I was talking to Aaron Hagar. He filled in while you were gone. And uh, his dad, uh, his dad wasn't going to do it. His dad's like, oh, Ferrari should be a sports car. He was a little bit old school. And then uh, Aaron was talking to him going, you know what? You know, dad's like. You want an everyday driver. Um, the SUV is a little bit easier to get in and out of. Uh, the the Pure Songway is still going to have the twelve cylinder engine in it, so it's going to sound like a Ferrari. And then the more he thought about it, he's like, you know what? You're right. I think this is going to be a fun thing. So he ordered one up. Beautiful, like that Grigio gray with the Bordeaux interior. It's it's nice. So yeah. So Sammy Hagar is getting the Pure Songway. I think that's how you say it. I have no idea. I um yeah I quite like one of those that would that would work for me right now yeah oh you just become a rock star you'll be fine yeah <laughs> um yeah so that's an interesting vehicle but uh, what else came out this year that you like or what's coming out pretty soon uh, well I was going to say the lightning but you've just rubbished the fact that rubbished it having bought one but I, I thought that was probably the most interesting and significant vehicle. Um, you know, we've seen the Rivian as the first EV truck, but that's more of a kind of middle class leisure project product. Yeah. Whereas the Lightning is, you know, is a proper F one fifty that's electric. And, you know, I think as you say, the infrastructure thing's still a still a challenge, but if you can charge it at home particularly and you've got that got that in place and you're not doing if you're not towing hundreds of miles every day, you're not driving hundred miles a day, if you're just using it like most people use trucks, it's terrific. And has big advantages over a uh, a normal truck that it has the front, it has the you know the plug-in power. There's there's so much to like about it. Um, so I think that's probably the most significant vehicle that we've okay. that we've driven this year. I mean, I don't I don't disagree. I it first of all, I got the platinum right, so I got a really really nice truck. Right, they did a really nice job making a really nice truck, and the fact that it's electric just means that it's quiet and it's fast. 
and I I can plug it in pretty much whenever I want because I go to the warehouse there, you know, where I have a plug all the time. Just my debacle this past weekend just didn't work out. There was just too many too many things driving around. You do have to think a little bit more about like what you're going to be doing over the next two or three days. There is a little bit of that more than the gas car. Uh, you have. To I think, think about Matt, you, you've taken it on tough living is living like the lifestyle. You, I think you, the reality is you need a garage or at least an outdoor space with a charger and the way Ford set up the chargers. Now you can start, you know, even from home, you can start to charge faster with like an 80 amp system or whatever it is. Yeah. I think it's about 80 amps now. So, you know, if you've got that, you're home and dry. It's if you haven't, then it becomes. But there probably aren't many people like you who are living in an apartment with a, with a with a F one fifty Lightning. You're probably an edge <laughs> probably case. not. But everything else I've actually used. Uh, 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 Tammy's car had a dead battery while she was out at, at like a shopping center or a mall, and I I threw some tools in the front and I drove out there with. Uh, with a battery box, and the battery box wasn't enough to jump it. But I also had one of my SeaTech chargers with me, one of the big 25 amp chargers. I plugged it in to my truck with the outlet and got the car started, and it was fine. So I I, I already did use a bunch of that stuff uh, for it as well. And at first, I was like, "Oh, can I jump someone else's battery with my truck?" Although it has a 12 volt battery. In the in the front and behind the panel in the front, and I was like, "But I don't think I could need to because there's a power outlet there, and I could just bring a charger or, or a jump charger with me and actually plug it into a wall." But it, in this case, into the truck, and that worked. So, um, yeah, yeah, I do like I do like it. I like. We it. did a thing at the office where we used it to power film lights. Yeah, because we yeah on location, and basically it was like powering its own shoot, which was kind of cool. Listen, when when the truck. When the trucks come out, not just the Lightning, when these trucks come out with a 400-mile range and for someone like me, for whatever, and I can get 320, 340 out of it at 400-mile range truck, then it would work out. It would work out better. It would work out better. So I, I see this four Lightning that I have now not something I'm I'm keeping for a very, very long time. And I don't know, maybe it's a couple of years. You know, I like the truck. It's comfortable. It's really nice. It's really comfortable. The independent rear. Um but yeah. it was a hundred grand, right? Yeah, a hundred thousand bucks. So what and it's a and it's a truck and you're ca- talking about its comfort and not its functionality. Yeah. Yeah. It, Although we may it, be moving it's why so. <laughs> not point nine percent of the people on the planet buy a truck. Right. So actually, and I started thinking about, you know what, maybe the Mustang Mach-E or the Genesis. Uh, what's the EV that the Genesis has? Uh, GV, GV60. That's GV, a really nice little thing. GV60. Yeah. And now I'm looking at those going, well, maybe something like that would be more practical and a little bit easier to park and and comfortable and nice. But then I start looking at going, oh, well, you know, they got, I don't know, 270-mile range. Does that mean I'm going to get 200-mile range or – are they more accurate? You know, so now I kind of feel like I'd have to get one of those things and and really drive it for like two weeks to see what my commute and my driving style is like and what it does to the range on those. Uh, yeah, so anyway. The, good, the other good thing about those Genesis and the Hyundais, the Ionic 5, which is, again is one of the great cars that we drove this year. It's winning, all, winning tons of awards. Um, they have got an 800 volt architecture on board, which to 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 make sense in the real world basically means it can charge faster. And you know, today only things like the Lucid, the Porsche Taycan have had that technology. And Hyundai suddenly brought it down to a Ionic Five um, and the Kia EV6 as well. So you know, that's interesting. That it's getting the cars are getting better at handling faster charging speeds as well. The only thing is that needs to go with that is a bit of education because we've had it a few times where you turn up at, you know, if you can find a fast charger like a 350 kilowatts, you know, you'll turn up and somebody's like plug their five-year-old Chevy Bolt into it and it's charging like at three kilowatts or something. Yeah. You know, people have got to understand that it's a bit like when you plug your iPhone in. If you plug your iPhone into your laptop charger, it doesn't charge like a laptop because it can't accept that much juice. It still charges like an iPhone. And, And so there's like this whole world of, education that goes with it so it's not just the chargers it's the cars have to evolve to allow themselves to charge at a faster rate yeah 
All right. So what what else is at the top of your list uh, personally this past year? It doesn't have to be EV. It could be weed, whatever. I saw a, I saw a new Mercedes S class that just came out. That looks gorgeous. Uh, you know, big, expensive flagship car, something like that. But, you know, the SUV market, like what should we be looking at? I think there's just a – there's not been that much where you just look at it and say this is – really stand out i mean i like things like you know the kia things like kia sportage hybrid like from the real world it's like a really nice family suv for 30 grand yeah Um, pardon range rover oh actually i forgot range 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 rover i drove in there was so much hype you know coming out for that vehicle so i I, the range rover's an issue i went and drove that up in uh up in napa uh, a few months back it's a beautiful looking thing. I think they've done a fantastic job of making it look distinctive and expensive. And Jerry McGovern, the the design director there, I, I know well, and he, um, yeah, he's done a terrific job of kind of talking to the kind of luxury market. I mean, the thing is, it's one hundred and thirty grand plus now. I mean, so it's, it's a fortune. But the other the other thing about it is that now you can get a Range Rover with a three row, and apparently that was driven by the US because people said, you know, ah, you know, the, he was like, if you want a three row, buy the Discovery. And everybody went, ah, oh, we don't like that stupid number plate. And also, mm-hmm. if I say I've got a Discovery, everybody thinks my business is failing. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, uh, so, it, so it's like, well, let's buy that. So, so now there's a three row Range Rover. And I, I really like it. It's like, objectively, is it better than something like a Mercedes GLS that's quite a lot cheaper? Probably not. Uh, and we did a video that compared the two, and objectively, it's probably not. But just as a thing to travel in, is I, I, I mean, I have a soft spot for them. Listen, I don't think 130 grand has deterred many people because already not I'm seeing more. a ton of them on the road. Like, I mean, but, obviously but we're, a, we're in the hub here in, in LA, but they're everywhere. They're brand new. And, they're and everywhere. You, you could easily spend over 200 grand on one if you go for like the full executive seating and yeah, all the, the rest autobiography of it, but, or something like one of the high end trim yeah. models. And they've had, they've had problems building them. You know, JLR generally, you know, J- Jaguar Land Rovers have a tough, tough year. Their CEO just is, is leaving. You know, they've been struggling to build cars fast enough. Jaguar's kind of been allowed to die as a gas engine, as a gas engine range. And they're talking about reinventing it as a super luxury EV. I mean, I kind of fear for them a little bit on that on that one. So... Yeah, right, right. and there is a Range Rover at the moment. There's a plug-in hybrid, but there is a full electric Range Rover coming. And one of the, I think, one of the interesting things in the market right now is you've got people saying you have to build a bespoke EV on a unique platform, blah, blah, blah. Then you've got people like Land Rover, probably for cost reasons, saying, well, we just can't do that. So we're going to build a Range Rover that can either have a gas engine, a hybrid, or an electric but also, a company like BMW is doing the same thing. So, although they've got the iX, which is that's a great vehicle, we we'll talk about in a minute. But they've got an iX, which is kind of a bespoke electric car. Now they're doing the seven series and the i seven. And basically, what they're saying is, you can have a seven series with a gas engine, or we can rip the en- gas engine out and stick a motor in it and call it an i seven. But it's basically the same vehicle. So, you know, there's some different, interesting strategies going on. And BMW says, yeah, there's a bit of compromise doing that way, but not of enough of a compromise to really worry too much. I, I think that's an interesting move for them. I think it's going to be a more effective move for them. I think Ford has kind of shown some love for that that idea of going, hey, let's just take a regular F-150, let's, let's make it electric, but make it everything feel like an F-150. The, the, the gauge cluster, the touchscreen, like everything's still an F-150. I think our, people are kind of buying into that. So for BMW to go, oh, we're going to have our full EV and it's going to be a little weird looking and it's not going to have gauges or will have – who knows, whatever the layout is with these damn EV cars. But then go, oh, but the 7 Series, our flagship car, that's going to just feel like a 7 Series, you know? Um, Yeah, and and, uh, Genesis have just done it with um, the GV70. So they took out – they basically had the GV60, which is their proper EV. It's on the same platform as the Ionic 5. And they said, oh, we're going to do electric version of GV70. So I said, well, why are you doing that? Because they're basically the same size, or certainly the interior space is the same. Yeah. And they were like, well, a lot of people don't want one of these, like, electric cars. They want a car with a motor. So the, the, you're seeing this quite a bit where people are going, well, we might as well just stick a motor in it. So yeah. Genesis are going to end up with two cars that are basically priced the same, that are almost the same size. 
but one of which is like a electric new age thing and one of which is kind of like a traditional suv but electrically powered so it's kind of i mean that'll transition away but i think there's a big recognition and if you look at what toyota's done with the bz4x which is a stupid name and not a very not a very good (laughs) appealing car you know they they basically said we're going to build a toyota we're going to build an electric toyota rather than build like an ev and so they've come up with something that's a bit like "Eh." But actually, will probably appeal to a army of you know people who always bought Camrys and Rav fours and everything yeah. else. Uh, Alistair, I know we're kind of running out of time uh, with with you here. Um, we always appreciate you being on the on the show. So have a good uh, holiday, have a good uh, New Year. Um, Edmonds is going to be coming out with their top picks as well. When do you guys have that scheduled? Uh, I we have that scheduled. Yes, yeah, stand by. I mean, you know, I can barely barely contain myself with excitement. Uh, <laughs> January the uh, January the eighteenth is the launch uh, uh, of of some of our awards. So um, I'm not going to give any more away than that. But we have an awards program that's launching in January. Uh, so we're actually working behind the scenes super hard on that at the moment, uh, and that's really exciting. We've got some great content coming up. We've got something that's launching just after Christmas as well, which will be a, an A to Z sort of wrapping up all the all the new vehicles coming out in 2023. And maybe that's a good subject for a, for a future pod as well. Well, we're going to have to like, have you on like in, a, in January for sure, so we can you know go over this uh, top picks. And you know, I just would say how, how much I always enjoy doing the pod, and hopefully people enjoy listening. And um, Hope everybody has a, a wonderful holiday, and uh, thanks for keeping me entertained, chaps. Appreciate it. Thanks so much, Alistair. We appreciate it. Uh, I'm mocking my accent. <laughs> yeah, um, eh, it comes with it. It's part my, of it. My nieces, actually, a little anecdote before I go. My nieces, my twenty, what is she now? Twenty-two year old nieces driving instructor in the UK. Yeah, listens to this podcast because when she said a name, and then she started talking about like her family. So he listens to this podcast in the UK. So if you're listening. Big shout out. Yeah, make sure she doesn't fail her test. Exactly. Just saying, no, no, do us a favor. No, 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 do no, us a favor. No, no. Um, all right, so we're going to let Alistair go. But the, the the one car I wanted to mention, Bill, that I was super impressed with, haven't driven it yet for this past year, Corvette Z06. Yep, I, was, uh, uh, mentioned that I haven't driven that either. I'm going to go, but I haven't driven that either. But if you're asking me what I'm most excited about, I, I was supposed to do the launch of it. Couldn't go because couldn't go. we ended up we had COVID in the family. Couldn't go, uh, so super excited about that. I, I I agree for what they're doing for that amount of money, not the markup money, the actual money. <laughs> I, I think it's impressive. I think it's going to put everyone on call. These supercar companies, it's like how much can you pay for that badge or that brand name now? Because Corvette's taking away the mantle for them. And I know everyone's joking. Every journalist is driving the Z06, going, "This is the best Ferrari I've ever driven." It's like I, I get it. You know, the first one to write that was good. The fifteenth person to write that was like, eh. <laughs> but that's the impression that that car is giving everybody. So uh, it's super interesting. Um, we're gonna have to find some time to uh, to to find one of those and drive one of those. I'm sure everybody's on the list to drive one of those. But um, uh, yeah, I just think that's a just gonna be a very very interesting car. No question. Cannot wait to check that one out. Craig Jackson got his. He's got the black convertible, you know, but it's a convertible hardtop, I guess. But yeah, he took delivery of his and fired it up. And actually, his is all just murdered out. It's just black on black. Oh, yeah. Which I was actually a little surprised for him. I thought he would have. Because he's he does like a lot of throwback colors and some paint to sample stuff, and you know he's got his GT five hundred that he custom ordered in the green to match his uh, uh, green Hornet like Shelby GT. But I know. think this is more indicative of ha- of who he is right now, and because I think he wants to drive this car all the time. I think he does want to drive this car. Yeah, I think I think this is going to be his go to sports car. I'm sure he's got. Uh, a, a, a nice daily like SUV or something, right? It's a, you know little practical, little less flashy. But I think you're right. I think he's going to actually really end up liking this Z06. I it wouldn't surprise me if he at some point gets two of them. You know that one that he doesn't touch 
that's maybe in a in a in a flashy red or something, and then his I'm sure black he's one. way ahead of us. I'm sure he's way <laughs> I'm sure he's way ahead of us. You know he's, he's yeah. Grand. All yeah, there's there's not much we're gonna there's not many ideas we're gonna put into his head for these types of things. He's got it already planned out of what he's gonna be doing. But uh, I'm I'm actually excited to kind of chat with him about that car because I know, you know, maybe come January at the event when we see him, he's gonna have thoughts. He's gonna have seat he's time. Gonna in drive the shit out. Of him. He's you gonna drive he. the shit. I hope he does. I'm I'm sure he will. Um. Okay, so let's say let's uh, let's wrap this up uh, for the year. You know, we appreciate you guys listening. It's been an exciting year, and we've got a lot more planned uh, for the future. And um, I think uh, over the holiday break, uh, we'll I want to grab the interview that Adam did with Jay Leno, and uh, we'll we'll put that up as a car cast episode. So, uh, uh, producer Bill or Ben. Bill, Bill's right here. But then Ben make a note that interview with 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 Leno, where he talked about the fire and what really happened, and that was on Adam Carolla show. That was a great interview. That was a great interview. But he really got into like what happened, and he was under the car, and he was on fire, and he yelled for his guy Dave. So I was like, Dave, I'm on fire. And he's like, What? He's like, Pull me out from under the car. I'm actually on fire. And then I can see it now. And, and like what he had to do, the treatment, and the the amazing doctors. What? Even just the medical treatment that – talk about advancements in technology, what they're able to do. Uh, you know, to Jay's credit, though, Jay told a great story. He made it entertaining and, and kind of downplayed, I think, the pain factor. But I can't imagine how much fucking pain he was in <laughs> during the, that what they had to do to, you know, to, to get them all wrapped up. Anyway. Let's uh, let's post that uh, uh, during the holiday break. We'll cut that in because um, uh, that's a great story. You guys want to hear that because we love Jay and he's such a big, you know, he's simpatico being an enthusiast in this space. So we want to make sure he's good. Um, all right. So we'll uh, look for some updates for you on uh, on Instagram. See what's going on over the next couple of weeks. See what uh, see what what Santa brings you guys. As long as Santa doesn't bring me another trade working on my garage, I'm, I'm going to. Yeah, right. Uh, the your your movie Santa Slay. I know you've got that in your garage, and it's funny because after you like mentioned it in one of your videos, uh, I think Ralph Jills or somebody posted the he was taking a photo with the with the. With the with the modern was, Challenger sleigh, yeah, I was like, that's why you don't have it. They have that shit in their lobby. Oh <laughs> they, yeah, they have that thing in their in their headquarters or something. I thought Little Naz had it. Remember when he kind of stole the concept and did a commercial last year with with some product? I but he used the sleigh. Right? He used so the I, sleigh. Yeah, yeah. I don't. I didn't know that uh, Dodge Dodge probably had another one. But, yeah. Um, yeah. One of these days, man. And don't be surprised if I don't get my hands on it. That's what I'm saying. Just wait, uh, wait a beat or two until they, they're they're done with it. But the, yeah, they brought it out to the auto shows and stuff in the past. So, um, okay, listen, well, I will spend it from the beams like I am going to do the first. Song. Yeah. <laughs> well, enjoy the new gym. You got it, my friend. Happy New Year. Uh, happy holidays to you, to all the listeners. Thanks for uh, tuning in. And just wait till 2023. It's going to be a, a fun packed automotive uh, year. That is for damn sure. And I cannot freaking wait. Thanks, guys. Until next time, keep the air in the spare and the bag in the wheel. For the latest updates and call in times, follow the show on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at CarCast Show. If you'd like to write in, fill out the form on CarCastShow.com. And don't forget to give us a nice rating on iTunes. CarCast is a Corolla Digital production and is produced by Chris Loxamana. For more information, visit CarCastShow.com. You know, I got to tell you, I have so many garbage apps on my phone, I never know where to look for stuff. And recently, I decided to clean house. All the junk and clutter gone. This leaves me with my most cherished apps. You know, the ones that can do it all. 
like my Live One app. Music, events, news, podcasts, comedy. Oh, and actual musical stations curated by humans, not those robots hanging out on Bezos' yacht. All this on one tiny little place on my phone. I've become such a fan of the app we here at the Adam Carolla Show will give you three months free. Jump on to liveone.com forward slash Corolla to lock in your deal today. And with inflation at an all-time high, this is a huge savings. Liveone.com forward slash Corolla for three months plus for free. No ads. Do you own? Do you rent your home? Sure you do. And it can be hard work. You know what's easy? Bundling your policies with Geico. Geico makes it easy to bundle your homeowners or renters insurance along with your auto policy. It's a good thing, too, because you have so much to do already around your home. Why not make it easy? Go to Geico.com, get a quote, and see just how much you could save. It's Geico easy. Visit Geico.com today. That's Geico.com. All month long on Pluto TV, stream the biggest Tyler Perry movies free. Watch your favorites like Medea's Witness Protection and Medea's Big Happy Family. Join Tyler Perry as he goes on a couple's retreat with Sharon Leal in Why Did I Get Married? Or Idris Elba and Gabrielle Union in the Tyler Perry directed film Daddy's Little Girls. Plus, Pluto TV has hundreds of channels with thousands more movies and TV shows available on live and on demand. Download the free Pluto TV app on all your favorite devices and start streaming now. Pluto TV. Drop in, watch free.